Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Paradigm Shift in Educational Comedy. Um, I'd been wanting to do this follow-up for a while. Um, I am a bit glad that I waited, though, but there's just, you know, all sorts of feelings on this. I've just been so just, like, yearning to frickin' bust out in a rant about. Um, before we begin, um, I want to make a few things clear. Like, number one, I'm not sure if my perspective on this and what I'm about to say, I'm not, I'm not sure how common of a perspective it's going to be or not. I'm not, I can't say that, oh yeah, tons of people just share my perspective, nor can I say that, that they don't. I, I, I really have no freaking idea because for those of you who know me well enough to know, I like pointing out freaking dichotomies, which means I'm, you know, I'm not taking one side or another. I examine things, you know, more holistically and do my best to utilize critical freaking thinking and discernment instead of, you know, doing the which is better Harry Potter or Twilight sort of, you know, dick wagging, pissing contest sort of stuff. So it is my intention to look at this situation as objectively as possible. Of course, there's a little bit of subjectivity by default of being human. I can obviously only perceive reality as me being myself. I can't perceive reality through anybody else's eyes. I'm not everybody else. <clears throat> um, and I, I just, I'm really glad for everything. I, well, I thought that her name was um, Asena, apparently it's actually Asena, now that I've heard her pronounce it in a video, okay, so, so noted, so corrected, so on and so forth, but, yeah, any freaking way, um, after all this went down, and, you know, I already made a video about it, and obviously, I'm glad for everything she's done and said, but, I still see that there's a bit of a dichotomy at work here. Um, of course, I don't blame her or anybody else, really. I mean, we're raised in a neurotic society. We're raised to think either extreme left, extreme right, and jump to all these conclusions, make all these assumptions, have dick-wagging contests, blah, blah, blah. And... Yeah, so I'm. it's a big tangled mess, and I'm going to address, you know, all sides of this issue, and I'm going to try to untangle the mess as best I can, and again, I hope one day she watches this. I know she's very busy and all that, but I hope one day she does watch this and hopefully might learn from it, hopefully, maybe, possibly, we shall see, or she might think I'm just being totally stupid. I don't know. Uh, hell, uh, you all might uh, out there in YouTube land might think I'm being stupid, or you might agree with me. I guess we'll figure out which. So, there's another video that she made after that um, she put up on Vimeo. Apparently, it seems to be taken down now. I um, I don't see it anymore. But it, she went on she, she, this rant where she seemed to be just so surprised that you know the media and all narrow-minded ignorant blind mass media followers were just condemning her and, and trying to say oh it's just a publicity stunt and this that and so on and so forth and so she kind of reacted and you know took down her youtube channel and so on and so forth so the first thing that i was i was compelled to do i mean I would, uh, I would explain right now what that video is, but I already explained it in the email that I sent to her. So I'm just going to read um, the email. That'll make things a lot easier, seeing as my thoughts are more organized in it. <clears throat> um, the title is, uh, Please, Asina, Don't Fall for Mainstream Bully Tactics. <clears throat> and here is my email. Dear Asina, Again, I agree with all the points you've made, and I'm glad you're making them. Let it be known, however, that if you want to work with other game changers, it will require being open to other points of view. 
those points should of course be expressed to you with respect as you deserve respect. Your fellow game changers will support you more by telling you where your blind spots are in order to help you not fall for the parasitic mainstream manipulations. To that end and with respect, I feel you are falling hook, line, and sinker for a few very classic bullying tactics that the mainstream inflicts upon people. So I want to bring these to your attention. We are brainwashed by society to not think much of ourselves, and despite any awakenings we might have, that programming doesn't just disappear with the snap of the fingers. It can't be ignored any more than the roaches in the walls can be ignored. If you ignore them, they will breed. As the old saying goes, massive breakdowns can often lead to massive breakthroughs. Why deny that you had a breakdown and why view it as a bad thing that you need to move beyond? Society wants us to think that having and expressing human emotions makes us bad or dysfunctional or guilty or whatever. And that's a crock of shit. Whether you like it or not, you're a role model. Do you really want to send a message that says, when you are attacked by bullies, refuse to shine your light, it says R-I-G-H-T, I, I typo, I meant to say light, L-I-G-H-T, refuse to shine your light, refuse to be yourself, and just stuff it all down and forget about it? You said, let's not make this about me, and I say, why not? That is exactly what it is about because you are in a position to be the change you want to create in the world. One cannot do that by devaluing one's own importance and shrugging it off by saying, oh, well, other things are more important than me or what I'm doing. Other things are equally important, but not more important. Put yourself for a moment in your imagination, in the position of the mainstream psychopaths. Imagine they are in a boardroom meeting having a discussion. The conversation goes something like this. Members of the board, we have a problem. This is Cena girl, she's a problem. If she's allowed to whistleblow on the abuses our industry puts people through, and this creates a paradigm shift in the awareness of the masses, we stand to lose billions in profits. How can we quell this situation? And another member of the board responds, Simple. Turn the pressure up. Smear her. She will react in such a way to where she will want to draw attention away from herself. And this reaction will make it seem even more like she is just trying to pull some sort of publicity stunt. She doesn't understand our tactics. She doesn't have the self-esteem to defend herself. All she can do is react exactly the way we have programmed the masses to react for years now. She will move on to other topics, and a month from now, this will all be forgotten. You said their reaction surprised you. Why would it all be a surprise? Uh, yeah, why would it all be a surprise? It wasn't for me. You've become a threat to their industry, and they've declared war on you. If you back down, they win. Thankfully, other people have downloaded and re-uploaded your inspirational message prior to you deleting it. Would have been a damn shame if that been lost. I already made one video thanking you for everything you said, and also making several points about not letting them win. You may or may not want to face the reality of all this, and I respect your sovereign free will right, <clears throat> excuse me, your, your sovereign right to your free will choice to face this or not, to fall for their tactics or not. So I'm not going to sit here trying to tell you that you should or shouldn't do anything. All I can do is tell you what I intend on doing. I will be doing another video very soon addressing this issue. Yep, the video you're watching right now. You can watch it or not. That's your choice and I respect it. But I'm going to outline the media bullying tactics. I'm going to explain which ones have worked on you so far and why. I'm going to explain that your points are all valid, that you're not pulling some sort of stunt. And I'm going to encourage people to email you with messages of support. 
You might choose to let these bullies dim your light, but I'm not going to let them dim mine. This is an important issue, and it needs to see the light of day, not be ignored and say, okay, don't focus on me. Let's, let's move forward to other things. That's fear talking. So do as you wish, but I'll not be stopped by, not my, another typo, any mainstream media bullies. You also don't have to face this alone. If you want to get on a piece at Google Hangout and discuss this with me and the people I work with, that would be great. If not, we'll be discussing it without you, but it's going to be discussed. You can either participate or not. Your choice will be respected, and we have nothing but love, acceptance, and full respect for you over here. So do as you will. You've got your choices to make. We've made ours. Best wishes, Dave Kelso, and that being me. Alrighty, so I have no idea if she actually read that or if other people have emailed in with similar sentiments or whatever, but whatever the case, it seems like that original video to where she was like, let's not make this about me. Let's just, let's just ignore this and pretend this didn't even happen and just move on to more important issues and you know, to where she took down her YouTube channel and this and that and so on. She was going on that with that rant. Um, that's no longer on her website. Um, I'm pretty sure that the video got that she took it down or if she didn't, at least she deleted the, the blog entry here about it. Um, and then the videos that she posted after that, which start on this one. November 5th, and then they go forward, seem to actually be taking my advice. Oh my God, Asina, did you hear me? Did, did, did my words actually do something? Or did maybe other people with similar opinions state similar things? And maybe you got bombarded with that point of view, and maybe that made you think a little or something? I don't know. My mind reading capabilities suck pretty bad, so I'm really not sure what happened with all of that. I can only speculate. But um, I do want to go into some of the dichotomies. Um, as tempted as I am to play, you know, all these different videos through, I, I have watched them, so I think I'll just kind of, you know, summarize and, and just kind of make the points that um that i want to make like okay um in this one these people exist she was um she was talking about how she she stumbled upon this place where people actually cared more about talking about issues and exchanging ideas and didn't didn't care about all of the you know Trivalities that um you know that the 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 freaking you know well all the stuff she went on a rant that she's sick of that you know they just cared about people being people and and you know what people were saying and she's like oh my god people like that exist yes there's actually a lot more of us out there Asina than you might actually think but unfortunately when girls or humans for that matter, but because Asina is obviously female, I'm going to put it from the more the female perspective. Um, when girls think things like, oh, nice guys can't exist and misery is the only reality and, and, you know, all these, all these negative, you know, belief systems about reality. Well, the negative and the positive equally coexist and everything in between. But, you know, when we kind of got this grumpy kitty syndrome going on, it is a neurological fact, biological fact, that all five sensory, you know, data that the brain processes and conceptual data as well, the brain can view that however it wants. It can delete information out of, you know, your awareness. It can edit information, you know, it can, it can manipulate, it can do all, sign, all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean, the, the brain and the mind and the human will is very very powerful so <clears throat> a girl could be surrounded by nice guys it, it, it'll be completely invisible to her like they're not even freaking there and all she'll see is all the assholes and i actually have an analogy for this imagine 
a little white stain on a black dress. You know, there's two equally valid ways to view that situation. And by the way, the word valid simply means it exists. It has nothing to do with correctness or incorrectness or any of that. Valid, validate, you know, like when, when you try to use a web form and the little capture thing comes up and says, please click on all the images that look like a stopwatch or whatever. That's validating that you're a human and not a robot. That's you don't have to try to prove yourself worthy to the to the web script or to prove yourself correct above all. It's it's just wanting to validate that your humanity exists because obviously another script is not going to be able to go through and do that. So anyway, back to the freaking analogy. So black dress, little white stain on there. There's two equally valid ways to do this. Way number one is, oh my God, there's so much black dress there, right? <clears throat> that that little white stain is just going to just going to totally stick out. It's the only thing there that's white. Holy shit. The other way to view it is, wow, there is so much black dress and that white stain is so tiny. Nobody's gonna notice that white stain because there's just so much black and a little bitty tiny bit of white stain there you know it's it's like tr trying to trying to yell at a at a, a metallica concert the music's blasting and 10,000 people are screaming and cheering and then you're trying to yell your point to all of them it's just you know your voice is going to be drowned out by all the other voices and all the other noise um and isn't it funny that typically when a girl is thinking about it in terms of a black dress. She's all paranoid that that little bitty tiny white stain is going to be visible. And she's like, oh my God, oh, I got a stain. Ah. But when it comes to being able to view that nice guy right there out in the, in, in the midst of the sea of assholes, all she can see is the sea of assholes. The white guy, you know, does not stand out. All she can see is the sea of assholes. And that is because in her belief system, because her belief systems are totally focusing on the negative, um, her awareness is going to be to that negative because that's how society has trained her to be. You know, so obviously it's a negative view to be like, oh my God, you know, I'm going to be so embarrassed by this little white stain on this black dress. It's going to stick out so much. It's going to cause me all this stress and aggravation because stress and aggravation is the most real reality for me. So that's my focus. Well, you know, it's the same thing with, you know, the nice guy in the sea of assholes. Um, again, the negative view takes precedence. So oh my God, you know, there's no way I could see a nice guy in the sea of assholes. So the nice guy probably doesn't exist anyway. It's all just assholes. All these guys are just materialistic and want to get in my pants or only only care about views and ratings or, or, or my beauty or, you know, insert like big long list of, you know, freaking, you know, superficial shit here. But that's just all a perspective view. And, you know, if you're always looking down at the ground, you're never going to see the sky, right? And if you believe that that dirty ground is all that exists, and the idea of even bothering to look up to see if the sky's there is going to be an insult to your intelligence, right? It's like, I'm not going to look up. I already know that sky's not there. Oh, if I look up, then that, that means I'm stupid and gullible, and I'm, I'm, I'm falling for it. When I look up and see that the sky isn't there, you're going to laugh at me and point out how stupid I am. And, oh, you're setting me up, so no, I'm just going to keep looking at the ground. I'm not going to fall for your little trap, you know, but that's, that's the way, the neurotic freaking way that humans are made to think. And whether somebody's having a... Um, an awakening about how society really works or how governments and corporations really works or how the fashion industry really works or a spiritual awakening or, oh my God, quantum physics can actually be applied to the macro, not just the micro or whatever it is, that, that spark of awareness that you've obtained does not negate the year's worth of programming that has formed neural networks in your head that are totally programmed to respond in all of the ways that now your awareness is, is recognizing, oh, that's neurotic, that, 
that's not good for me. So all these things are still going to fire off impulsive anyway. So then when that happens, the common trap in that, when it starts firing off, is again to go into denial and try to avoid it rather than face the shame of it. Because you've been taught to, oh, feel guilty and feel shameful. Oh, I just had a reflex where I did something that I know is stupid and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I should be so ashamed of myself. I'm guilty and blah. And, you know, and then we don't want to face that. So, like, the mind goes into denial, like, oh, I'm just going to pretend that didn't even happen because I don't want to face that. But the only way to reprogram new neural networks to react in the ways that you're preferring as per the new awarenesses, you know, that you've obtained as opposed to the ways you don't prefer is when those neural networks fire off in the old ways, pause, realize what's going on and go, okay, I realize this is happening. So I'm going to stop this right here. I'm just, I'm going to make a conscious course correction. I'm going to acknowledge that this fired off. I'm going to acknowledge that that's, that was a habit that I had obtained. I see what this habit is based in. I see that it's not really what I want to do. So I'm just going to hit the pause button on that right here. And I'm going to move in the direction that I'd prefer to go, go into instead of letting this co-opt me. And, you know, and that's all a part of it. And so, you know, because we're taught to go in such opposite extremes, like the, uh, the, uh, the extreme to think that, you know, that tools are evil. I mean, look, it's not YouTube that's evil. Monetizing things aren't wrong. Instagram isn't bad. Facebook isn't bad. I mean, yeah, it can be used for bad, but so can a hammer. You can bash someone's skull in with a hammer. It doesn't mean that the hammer is evil. You know, things like YouTube can be used productively to empower people and to, to, to be that living example of the change you want to create. But, you know, Asina, no disrespect in, intended, you are putting the tools up on a pedestal, deifying them, and whether you worship something or demonize it, it's still deifying it. It's still putting it up on a pedestal. Whether you say, oh, this is the cat's meow, I bow to you and your superiority. Or whether you look at it and go, oh, this is bad, this is evil, I shun thee, get thee out of my face, Satan. Whichever one you're doing, you're still putting, up, putting it up on a pedestal as an authority over you. So you're making the classic mistake of shunning the tools instead of recognizing, oh, I can use these same tools. I can use my my existing demographic to inspire people, you know, to, to, to show people what I've learned and to share these experiences. I've got all these millions of people watching me or however many it is or was that now I can help them. Or they can tune out if they think I'm crazy. That's their freaking choice. And I respect that. But but the ones that are really in need of that self-esteem boost, wow, now I'm in a position to do that. I've got all these followers on YouTube. I can I can show them a different way of looking at the world. I can show them a new way of being. I can inspire them. And because I'm monetizing my videos, I could make money in the process. There's nothing wrong with making money doing what you love doing. Uh, should farmers feel guilty because they love farming and they're making money off of it? Should computer nerds feel, or geeks or whatever word you want to use, feel guilty and horrible that, oh my God, they're making money from their skills and their passion and what they love doing? Why is it only a valid job if you're suffering and miserable and being someone's slave? Like, oh, that's the only valid form of work. That's the only honest, legitimate way of making a living. You know, what, what is so wrong with doing what you love doing and using those things to inspire others to change the world for the better and making money in the process? What is so fucking wrong with that other than nothing? I mean, I see so many people online like, Oh my God, you're, you're monetizing your videos. So that must mean you must be all in it for the money and you're, you're greedy and you're dishonest and you're not legit. It's like, okay, guys, 
Um, if I'm making money putting out videos for you for fucking free, how is that in any way, shape, or form fraudulent? Are you paying to watch them? No. Am I like charging you a thousand dollars for a video that probably shouldn't even go for two bucks? No, I'm not. I'm saying here, I'm monetizing this stuff. You can watch it for free. You get the content. I'm making money. Fucking cool. You know, no problem. There's nothing wrong with that. So, it's Cena. I feel you're making a classic mistake of demonizing a tool. I mean, you know, it, it's kind of funny. The more you can get someone to demonize a tool, the more power you have over them. Imagine during World War II, right? Just as an example, just for a funny example. This obviously didn't happen, but just for a funny analogy. Imagine if during World War II, the Nazis were able to trick all of the Allied troops into thinking that because the Nazis are evil, that any tools that the Nazis use are also evil, so we shouldn't use them. You know what I mean? That would mean we'd have to abandon the usage of planes. We'd have to abandon the usage of cars and vehicles on wheels. We'd have to abandon the use of guns. We'd we'd be complete. We'd have been completely defense, defenseless against the Nazis, and they'd have just conquered the world because we decided to throw down all our tools and say, "Well, these are the tools of Satan. So if we use those, we're evil tool. We're evil too. So we should just." throw those down and and whatever and you know obviously thankfully that didn't happen but it's the same it's the same sort of idea and people do have that mentality with a lot of things we're so quick to blame the tools that's why the war on drugs only produces more drugs the war on terrorism has only produced more terrorism so on and so forth I mean, we're, we're waging wars against inanimate objects and words in the fucking dictionary and sabotaging ourselves in the process. Of course, people are going to come and exploit the shit out of us when we've decided to flush our intellect and discernment down the toilet. Of course, of course, that's going to be a problem. Naturally, understandably. But we are trained by society to be that neurotic. We go through a school system... <clears throat> that instead of focusing on, hey, let's find out what you're good at and lock in on that and allow you to improve and, and excel so that you can go through life doing what you're good at doing and what you love doing. Instead of that, it's like, oh, let's make you jump through all these unreasonably realistic fucking hoops, right? And do all the shit you suck at and do all the shit you hate and then put stupid fucking deadlines on it. And if you can't navigate this labyrinth of emotional and psychological traps, then, oh, you fail. You're a failure. You get an F. You're a horrible person for not being a zombied out enough fucking Borg drone to be able to mindlessly and robotically navigate our snares and traps and, and ridiculous neurotic stupidity. Oh, you fail. You're horrible. You suck. You'll never amount to anything. <clears throat> and this is what school teaches us. So is it any fucking wonder that in our quote unquote adult life and you know adulthood is just a state of extended adolescence by the way because you get better at what you do so guess what if you're if you're practicing like crazy being completely neurotic then yeah you're gonna keep getting like really efficiently good at it as time continues to go on so it's no wonder that our society is as completely and absolutely fucked as it is so you know, it's like, I don't think there's anything wrong with pointing out all these dichotomies and learning from them. Einstein said, anyone who's never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Einstein's definition of insanity was also doing the same things over and over, expecting a different result each time. Well, let's look at history, um, Asina. There's plenty of people in history who have just blamed the tools and deemed the tool as bad and blamed the tool for corrupting people's minds into materialism and whatever. And gee, 
look at what's happened in every event. These people just became more easily to, easy to manipulate and exploit, and it just created more problems. Look at all of all the different mistakes that people have done all through history that we're still making because that mental malware is still in there. That when we come to a realization that we've made a mistake, we're trained, we're trained to see the idea of I don't know as this big wall and blocking knowledge instead of what it really is, the beginning of knowledge. We're trained to see you know, the process of trial and error, making mistakes as as making us weak and guilty and stupid and whatever, when really it's just a part of the natural process of learning. You know, we're taught to blame other people, other things, blame the tools, feel justified and point fingers and all this and that. Oh, it's social media's fault that everyone's so corrupted. It's social media's fault that that I felt so insecure when I was 12. No, it's not the tool's fault. If anything, it was the indoctrination that we were all brought up into, including you, that constantly drilled into our heads that, oh, you're not good enough unless you're jumping through everyone else's hoops. Because if you didn't have that indoctrination growing up, if you were actually encouraged from day one to, to do what you love doing and get good at what you love doing and excel in what you love doing, as per the old saying that if you, if you always do what you love for your career, you'll never work a day in your life because obviously the only difference between work and play is when it's play, you love doing it and when it's work, you hate doing it. But, you know, it's still the same task, quote unquote. It's just a matter of do you love it or do you hate it? So that's not the tool's fault, you know. Someone who hates farming, it's not the shovel's fault that someone hates farming. You know what I mean? So if, if you were brought up if any of us were brought up in a mentality of not blaming the tools, you know, then you would see social media similar to fertilizer. Are you going to be like, oh my God, fertilizer's stinky. It's literally shit. So I'm going to roll around in it and then act like it's forcing me to roll around in it and then feel victimized by the fertilizer, the manure, the shit. Or are you going to say, you know, I'm going to use this tool in my garden. This fertilizer will help me make my beautiful garden grow. Well, guess what? Social media is fucking fertilizer. And you can either act as if it's forced you to roll around in it and make you feel victimized. And it's all social media's fault. And, oh, all follows and likes and views do is corrupt the minds of people and blah, blah, blah. Or you can see it for the fertilizer that it is and go, you know, even though society has told me that I have to roll around in this shit and allow these views and, and followers and likes and whatever to dominate my perception of who I am supposed to think I'm supposed to be, I'm going to make a different choice now. I'm going to use this fertilizer to grow a garden because I like gardens, goddammit. They're beautiful. I can grow vegetables to feed myself for fucking free. I can grow awesome flowers and in the states and countries where it's legal, I can even grow some ummy nummy medicinal herbs like the marijuana. Yeah. So, you know, you can, you can view these inanimate freaking tools as some horrible monster that has corrupted you and corrupted everybody else. Or you can look at the bigger picture and just see that it's been a societal meme that we're all trapped in. And it, these tools called social media are just tools. I can show you so many freaking examples where these tools that you are condemning have been used for positive, uplifting, empowering things. But you know, if you decide that you're going to be in a mindset of, oh, those tools are evil. You can only use it for that. Well, guess what? There's nothing I can do about that. So if you're insisting on keeping that sort of thought, then I probably sound really, really crazy right now. Just fine. I respect your right to that perspective. Now let's move up a little bit here. Um, this first one here is the one that makes me think that either A... She actually read my email and maybe was pondering it and taking some things into consideration. 
or she received a bunch of other emails that were similarly themed to mine and she started realizing that you know maybe i am a role model maybe i need to do something positive with this maybe the stuff about me is equally important to what everybody else is doing and it's not that what everybody else is doing is more important so <clears throat> there's this video here behind the image effortless and that's her again going into um, some of her perspectives as far as how you know when you see girls doing these photo shoots and stuff and it looks like she's having fun on the beach and whatever that really it's it's like hours of freaking photography and she's she's trying to cater to you know to sponsors and everything else and you know she's just being ordered around and doing what everybody else wants her to do but she's not really having fun at all and you know so that's all about how you know the the industry manipulates and and uses girls so she was talking about that in a very deep and meaningful and truthful and honest and authentic way um then this one here she was talking about um a situation i mean you can watch the full video for the whole story i'm just kind of short point summarizing it as best i can a situation where like you know this guy seemed to be really interested in her and at first you know because she is a girl who likes more you know things to be more meaningful she was just kind of cold towards him and shrugged it off but he kept being persistent and charming and everything else and so eventually she's just kind of like all right fine i'll talk to him whatever and, you know he got her curiosity and then you know by the end of the story we come to find that this guy was just doing it because you know he you know liked her views and her visibility and he thought that combined together their total combined popularity that you know both of their visibilities could you know could benefit from it so it was purely a business proposal it you know it had nothing to do with him liking her for who she actually was as a person and you know it, it, she just kind of got really you know upset and pissed off by that understandably and um, it was just a, a really, you know, a real, raw, and honest story. And, you know, I, it, it, again, it just makes me feel like, oh, my God, did she actually listen? Did she see that, you know, maybe her sharing her experiences like this and maybe being that that role model for girls who have gone through similar experiences that that maybe she could create positive change this way oh my god did maybe she possibly listen to me or perhaps others who gave who might have given her similar emails holy shit you know so so far she seems to have gone from this no no it's not about me get off it other people are more important shut up now to to realizing that you know the more she shares her stories, that real, raw authenticness about it, and then other girls can watch that and go, you know, I can totally relate to that. I've been in something similar than, to that. Oh, my God. Other people can relate. And, you know, then <clears throat> it might also help break some of the stigma with guys because let's face it, most guys, when they look at a girl like her, I mean, I hate to say this, but, you know, most guys are thinking, oh, she's totally out of my league she's probably got guys all around her and 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 she's perfectly happy and you know why would she even want to be my friend much less you know anything more than a friend why would she want to be friends with a big old loser like me she's beautiful she's popular i'm nobody why would you know and so there's this stigma that oh if a girl's pretty and popular this automatically means that she's she's this stuck up plastic you know materialistic you know pompous sort of sort of girl and you know these sorts of videos totally call bullshit on that stereotype because the truth about a lot of pretty ladies out there is they they have some of the lowest self-esteem that you can imagine because they get sexually harassed so much and seen as like objects to be obtained like some trophy and with all the guys thinking oh she's out of my league it's like she has a hard time well she meaning the collective she in other words not specifically you know just her but 
you know, other girls, pretty girls in, you know, similar situations, you know, it's hard for them to even get, you know, regular male friends because all the, all the regular guys are thinking, oh, well, she's going to be looking down on me and I'm such a loser. So she'd never want to be friends with anyone like me, you know, much less anything else. And she's just completely feeling like a piece of meat that's used and thrown away. She's feeling worthless. She's feeling like trash. And there's a lot of beautiful girls that are just, that are feeling like this. And everybody's just making the assumptions like, oh, she thinks she's all that and she's got it all. And why would she care about even so much as being a friends with a, a, a nobody loser like me and da da da. And it's, it's most guys having that sort of attitude is, you know, that's a part of what contributes to these girls' low self-esteem. I mean, if any of these guys had the balls to go up to these girls and just say, hey, you know, I like you as a person. I mean, granted, at first you're probably going to get the cold shoulder because she is used to what she's used to. She's used to assholes. Just like she gave that guy that she's talking about in this video the cold shoulder because she's been used to what she's been used to, you know? So if if a girl's thinking assholes are the only guys that exist, she's going to give you the cold shoulder a bit. So prove her wrong, you know? I mean, don't be like creepy stalker persistent, but, but be persistent and be polite. And more importantly, be authentic. Don't try to think of what you can do to win her approval. Just be yourself, be a human. And if she doesn't like who you are, then fuck her. She probably is a, a selfish bitch or whatever then. But if she's actually a nice girl, then she'll be looking at you like, wow, he's actually being nice and respectful and authentic and just being himself. And, you know, he's not condemning me for my attitude towards him. He's just completely respecting me and being nice to me. And, you know, then she's got to stop and, and question her, her view about reality. Like, hmm, is it possible that maybe this person might actually be nice? Maybe this person might actually be respecting me for who I am and isn't trying to get into my pants? So, guys, there's lots of Asinas out there. And you don't have to be this big you know, like, you know, top 10 hottest guy from societal standards or whatever the hell to just be nice to a girl and just be her friend. And, you know, the whole idea of feeling that, oh, you have to have a girl as a girlfriend, otherwise you're a loser. That is, that, that is such fucking bullshit. As a matter of fact, most of the time, relationships that begin without having a pre-established history first, in other words, a friendship first, most of those crash and burn. Not all. I mean, there are, there are some, you know, some events where it'll start in the relationship category and it starts off there and is authentic. And because it's authentic, it continues going in a, in a productive way, but that's the minority. Um, most of them that start off purely on the relationship level are based on the mentality of, oh, I want a, I want a trophy girl on my arm. Or from the girl's perspective, oh, I want a trophy guy on my arm. You know, that sort of thing. People don't realize that if they're just friends with the girl first and they allow that friendship to build up and both people get to know each other, well, if they're liking each other more and more for who they really are and not for superficial reasons, then guess what? I think for most girls, it's not so important that she gets with this super studly, you know, top 10 on the planet, you know, sort of guy. I think it's more important to her that she's with a guy that makes her feel good about being herself and isn't treating her like a piece of meat and isn't disrespecting her and isn't afraid to communicate authentically and clearly and isn't afraid to let her, her do the same. <clears throat> Because clear and authentic communication doesn't mean that you always say what the other person's going to like hearing. Because, you know, let's face it, someone who really cares about you, they're going to say what you need to hear, <laughs> not what you want to hear. So sometimes that's not going to be pleasant. Sometimes, you know, the other person's going to be dishing you out some serious fucking reality checks and you're not going to like it. But you will still see it as being beneficial. 
and you will see, okay, yeah, that kind of did need to be pointed out. It's kind of awkward, and it sucks, and I don't really like being in this position, but at least they did it respectfully, and, you know, they did it because they kind of saw my blind spot there, and they really care, and, and they trust me enough to not, like, hate them forever for having said it to me, and they want to just be themselves around me, so, okay, cool, I can respect that. I mean, guys, put yourself in, in their position because it goes both ways. Honestly, you know, whether it's it's a female friend or, you know, a relationship or whatever, would you rather have a girl that's always, well, basically yes during you and telling you whatever it is she thinks you want to hear and feeling so emotionally repressed and so inauthentic that she has these periodic moments where she just blows up in your face angry for no apparent reason and you're like wow everything was fine how the hell did that happen come on guys you know what i'm talking about having those female friends that are just like oh no everything's fine <laughs> and then like eventually like their own emotional freaking repression from not being not feeling that they could you know just tell you what they really think like builds up so much that one little minor thing that you do that you don't know annoys them because they haven't told you about it you do it and boom it's like thermonuclear fucking detonation in your face and you're like oh my god what the fuck just happened here I mean, come on, who hasn't been through that with chicks, you know what I mean? I think everybody's been through that, and it gets crazy. But it's because the girl isn't letting, yourself, letting herself be authentic with you, but at the same time, I've noticed in my experiences, that's also because I wasn't allowing myself to be fully be authentic with her that i i was thinking to myself this list of things that i better not do i better not say i better not express da 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 otherwise if i let her know the truth of that then she's just gonna hate me well you know what a girl who's gonna hate you for for being honest well euphemistically speaking fuck her you know the hell with her and for for you ladies if, if a guy is you know gonna like criminalize you just for the crime of fucking being honest about what you think and feel about something well the fucking hell with him he's a pussy you can you deserve better you can be better than that there's going to be guys that are going to appreciate your real and raw honesty so you know fuck the losers that actually are losers you know it's uh, you know honesty authenticity being real and raw that's the most important and that can be conducted respectfully. Real and raw doesn't have to be like in a full fury blaze like, fuck you, motherfucker, I'm being real and raw right now. I'm full of fuck. Ah, fuck you. That's not what real and raw has to be. Come on. I mean, you can communicate like civil human beings and just be like, well, you know, I really don't like it when we get into this situation and here's how that makes me feel. And I know you're not meaning to come off in this and this and this way, but, you know, you do kind of come off that way to me when you say that and that and the reason is because i have these belief systems here and 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 this happened to me in the past that relates to this and so on and and you know i know that's that's about me that's not about you but that still doesn't change the fact that when you do that it reminds me of that and i really get triggered and i really don't like it and, you know you can conduct yourself respectfully like that it doesn't have to be a big fuck you how dare you trigger me you evil son of a bitch you know sort of thing so i know the idea of real and raw gets sometimes this you know this negative stigma like oh real and raw can only mean dramatic explosive and the height of anger no that's not what real and raw means this shit can be done very fucking civilly i mean you know, hell, look at even even my rant on here. I'm not, like, being all like, oh, if, if none of you agree with me, fuck you all, and da-da-da. I'm just like, hey, you know, these are my perspectives. Um, whoever agrees, cool. Whoever disagrees, that's fine. You know, I, I'm respecting everybody's right to think what they want. I'm respecting Asina's right to think whatever it is. She might think about this if she ever watches this. Who knows? But, you know, whether she's watching this going, hey, you know, Dave might have a point there. Or she's thinking, wow, that Dave guy, it's just, he's really just talking fucking nonsense. God, what the fuck is he smoking? Is he smoking some of that marijuana he was mentioning earlier? You know, what the fuck is wrong with him? You know, whichever way she's thinking about it, like, hey, that's cool, you know. I mean, 
people are allowed to think what they want to think about things. And, you know, that's perfectly fine, and I respect that. And it's showing that sort of respect to the girl that might just stand you a chance of having her respect you and not, you know, criminalizing her for having certain paradigms and, you know, feeling certain ways. Because, hey, if it's been the only real reality for her that guys are assholes, isn't it kind of unfair to, like, expect that, okay, I've snapped my fingers, so now you have to shift your belief system because I said so. Guess what? That only validates her previous belief because if you do that, you're being an asshole. Ta-da! So then that only validates the pre-existing belief system. It doesn't help her snap out of it. Yeah. So, anyway, Asino, don't fall for the mainstream bully tactics. They they are just going to try to spin it in every which way, and all their little lemming flower is going to be like, oh, she's just crying for attention, and blah, 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 and this and that. It's like those stupid fucking social justice warrior people that are like, oh my god, if you disagree with Obama but anything then you're a sexist and a racist and a terrorist and anti-semitic and you should be put in jail and oh my god blah 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 it's like especially in america right now like political correct smug bullshit is just like running rampant if you look at any of these news articles and stuff like they just get, keep getting increasingly more ridiculous and it's like it's not even worth getting mad about it all I do is I, I, I just laugh at it. I make fun of it. And I'm like, wow, really, people? You think that? Oh, okay. Must be some good shit you guys are smoking. All right. But why get angry about it? I mean, just call bullshit when you see it, but, but don't get – it's like why get fucking angry, you know? So don't let the mainstream media bullies, you know, get get you triggered. And for the people that might be listening to this that might still be thinking, all right, Dave, that's all well and fine, but just one little problem with what you're saying there, Dave. <clears throat> Can you absolutely prove that Asina is or is not? actually just doing this all on a publicity stunt. Ha ha ha, Dave, can you prove it? Can you prove it? Can you prove it? Where's your critical thinking now, Dave? Huh, motherfucker? Ha ha ha. Well, here's my take on that. Let's say, hypothetically, it's just a hypothetical here. I don't think she's doing a publicity stunt, but let's say, hypothetically, that this totally is a publicity stunt. Let's just say in a hypothetical. Regardless of that, the issues that she is bringing up are still very real. The things that affect female self-esteem and drop it into the shitter, those things are very real. These things really do happen. Um, you know, when, when girls are working with, you know, modeling and pressures from corporations and how they're treated and all that, that is a very real phenomenon. And, you know, you could research into that and find, you know, no end of evidence to that phenomenon existing. And even if it were to be a publicity stunt, it still doesn't help that her initial speech on it about the, the truths of these things that happen was very inspirational. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of girls out there that are going to be getting major self-esteem boosts from it, despite the fact that in this hypothetical, if it were to be a publicity stunt. So regardless of whether it was or was a publicity stunt, it doesn't change the facts like, you know, the grass is green, the sky is blue, and the earth is round, and all of the issues she mentioned are actually real and do exist and can be researched, and you can, you can look that kind of stuff up. So at that point, it negates the idea of, oh, publicity stunt or not. Now, there's the next thing. If it were to be a publicity stunt, it would be a really, really bad one that, that wouldn't even make any sense. Like, check this out. Any sponsors that would give her money for anything, they would only give her money because uh, she has a def demographic to make money from. And where is that demographic linked in through? Uh, YouTube, Instagram, all these other places, so on and so forth. So if she shuts down her social media stuff and, you know, obviously she's now making videos to where she's just got, you know, her high. I just woke up now freaking hair going on and she's not all, all, you know, 
jazzed up and the sexiest thing ever and she's not she's not doing all this product placement uh what incentive do any of these companies have to give her money now again uh like zero so how would that freaking be a publicity stunt oh gee let's just slit my throat for all my profits and call that a publicity stunt because that's just gonna make more profits you know that that's like that's like thinking that five plus five is zero you know it's like it doesn't make any sense so to me logically this couldn't be a publicity stunt because with no youtube all the videos that she had monetized that she was making money on poof gone so slitting the financial throat there and taking down you know the other um social media stuff now sponsors have no reason to want to give her money poof gone so it's like how is cutting off her income and making herself completely undesirable to sponsors a publicity stunt it's like it doesn't make sense publicity stunts are supposed to make you more money they're not supposed to eliminate the money that you're already bringing in and making it next to impossible to get more money i mean i really think that and, and, and you know here's another thing the way that what also proves to me that this isn't a publicity stunt is in a publicity stunt, you don't have authentic levels of emotional overreaction and, and self-sabotage. When it's a genuine emotional state, when you're genuinely feeling a certain way, the mental malware kicks in, you do all sorts of stupid self-sabotaging shit, that's about as human and genuine as it gets. That's not a freaking publicity stunt. That's what every human has done from time to time to time. Judging the social media tools as negative. Oh, evil tool. I'm going to judge the tool, thereby crippling myself and sabotaging myself instead of using using that tool towards a more empowering way and making money on it and so on and so forth. That is a total classic example of emotional stress making it so the brain is in a completely non-thinking mode. And so it refers back to neural networks, which are then programmed by society for us to sabotage ourselves, you know, going back to the whole low self-esteem thing again that society teaches us to be. So yeah, that is about as authentic as you can get in my freaking opinion. It's really hard to fake that. And again, I'll say, what good is a publicity stunt that ruins you financially? The whole point of publicity stunts are not to eliminate all the money you have and not to sabotage your future profits, but to not only retain the money you have, but increase your future profits. That is the point of a publicity stunt. By pure definition of the intention of a publicity stunt, two plus two is not equaling freaking four here. So... Anybody who thinks it's a publicity stunt, in my opinion, is just a fucking moron. In my opinion. And if I'm wrong, I'll own up to it and I'll eat fucking crow. But as it stands, my opinion is that it would be really stupid to think this is a publicity stunt. So, you know, that's that's just my take on it. So, you know, you can go to letsbegamechangers.com and, you know, you can watch these other videos in more detail and get, you know, her full scoop on these things. And, you know, Asina, I really do hope that you keep releasing more of these real, raw, and honest videos that can inspire people and help them through their emotional stuff. So these two are a good start. Please keep it up. And secondly... I really, really hope that you do reinstate a YouTube channel and you don't judge the idea of monetizing your videos as bad or horrible or evil. Otherwise, again, going back to the World War II analogy, the Nazis are going to beat you because you have a belief system of, oh, the tools are bad. I mean, you can do what you want, but, you know, if ever you watch this video, then at least you can't say that I didn't warn you. You know, later on when shit and fan rendezvous and you look back and go, oh, my God, yeah, maybe it would have been a good idea. To, you know, at least then you can't say, oh, well, shit, nobody warned me. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. That Dave guy did. Uh, what was his name again? Dave. Uh, oh, Kelso, I think it was. Yeah. That American guy with the, with the funny accent. Yeah. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. He warned me. 
oh man, I could, I could have listened to that. Oh well, you know. So, hey, hopefully you watch this, whatever. And again, my offer still stands. If you ever want to come out on a PSEC hangout and talk about these issues and actually have real discussions with real people, we'll get you and me and Katerina Edwards and Daphne Dugan and Kristen Meyer and Richard Hamilton and whoever the hell else wants to join us. We'll have a big old freaking massive discussion on freaking self-esteem and societal dichotomies and all that because we love us some of that shit. We love talking about these real issues and being real and really actually fucking inspiring people. So if you want to be a game changer and you're really looking for that real, raw, honest conversation that you say you're looking for, hey, I've emailed you a couple of times. Hopefully you see this video eventually. I'm not exactly difficult to find. You know, hit me up and say, hey, yeah, Dave, let's get on that that bitch and let's totally just fucking chat it up and yeah bring in Richard Hamilton and bring in Katarina Edwards and bring in Daphne Dugan and bring in all these people and let's really have some serious meaningful conversation about this shit because that would be fucking awesome and that would inspire people let's fucking do that Dave I would be totally freaking welcome to that but hey I can't force it all I can do is offer it so yeah I think that is pretty much it for this uh, this live stream broadcast here. Um, only reason I didn't have anybody else on with me at the moment is because I just had a lot to say and everybody else is currently busy, um, you know, at school, at work, et cetera, and so on, you know. So I guess I just kind of picked a bad time for it. <laughs> but I really just wanted to get all this out. You know, I didn't want to wait a freaking week. So I'm like, okay, whatever. We can always have a third video with everybody else too to kind of, you know, go over other people's thoughts as well. It's not like it's, you know, two video limit and, oh, sorry, Dave, you can't discuss this subject anymore. Oh, I could have 10 videos about this if I damn well want to. So, yeah, that is it for now. Thank you, everybody, for watching this. Um, feel free to, you know, comment with your thoughts or whatever. Share this on social media because, folks, social media isn't evil. It's a fucking tool. You know, kind of like our president. He's a fucking tool as well. <laughs> um, anyway, so, yeah, uh, share it. Inspire the shit out of other people. So on and so forth. You know, like, subscribe, uh, whatever you want to do. It's all good. Um, but yeah, I will see you next time. So here's that, you know, infinite uh, Google quantum void of superposition here. And you're going to watch me hit the stop broadcast button and it's going to go bye bye now.